namo buddhaya sabina when i welcome you in this video i am sharing my learnings from the middle discourse 82 a uh, name title of the discourse is with rathapala and it is also known as rathapala sutta uh, now the link to the entire discourse is given in the description okay uh, let me start uh, so the buddha was wandering in the land of mendicants and uh, there was uh, this uh, gentleman named Rathapala. Now Rathapala, uh, so when the, all the Brahmins and householders of that particular area, they were, met, uh, met the uh, uh, Buddha and there was this gentleman called Rathapala who was the son of a leading clan uh, at that place and he met the Buddha and he, he thought that, you know, why don't I, uh, it's not easy for someone living at home to lead a spiritual life utterly full and pure, like a polished shell. Why don't I shave off my head and beard, dressed in ochre robes, and go forward from lay life to homelessness? That means, why don't I take ordination under the Buddha and dedicate myself to the spiritual practice? So he went to seek the permission. Uh, so he went to seek the permission of the Buddha. Buddha refused the permission, saying that they Buddhas don't give going forth permission to the child unless they have the parents' permission. So then there is this lot of... Uh, discussion he had with the parents his parents said why are you want to go and all finally he was able to convince the parents and uh, and uh, he 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 got the uh, monastic uh, ordination uh, from the buddha and there is lot of thing around that which is not re very relevant so i don't want to discuss this particular thing uh, then when he came back uh, he wanted to visit his home and we, he, uh, after uh, taking monastery coordination, he went back to visit his home. So his father planned a lot of things like, you know, uh, revealing a heap of coins and bullions in front of him and saying that this is the fortune that you have. Your paternal fortune is there. Your ancestral fortune is there. He asked his um, Rathapala's wives to decorate themselves and, you know, do a lot of makeup and, you know, present themselves to him so that he kind of gets tempted to return back to the lay life. All his father, all of these things his father did. But Rathapala's uh, kind of dedication was uh, very resolute and uh, he he did not, you know, yield in to his father. Actually, there is this reference that he had already uh, got Arahant uh, as as when he practiced. Just a second. Yes, he got, he got Arahantship. So once he got the Arahantship in his practice, then there is no question. All the defilements had ended by that time. So when he went back, his father tried to lure him into returning to lay life, which he, he was he totally you know, was not interested in that. Um, uh, then he he said a story uh, when he had eaten. So so he said, "Father, don't please harass me. If you want to give me food, give me food. Otherwise, I'll go." So his father served him food and everything. So he said after that he said uh, kind of some verses. See this fancy puppet, a body built of sores, diseased, obsessed over, in which nothing lasts at all. Right? So he's saying about the body's impermanence. You, it's a diseased thing which you obsess, but nothing lasts. Right? This body will end one day. See this fancy figure with its gems and earrings. It is bones encased in skin, made pretty by its clothes. Right? Bones encased in skin. So he's talking about the body. Ro roughed feet and powdered face may be enough to beguile a fool, but not a seeker of the far show. That means you can do any kind of makeup or something, but it is not enough to, it, it may be enough to beguile a fool. That means a fool may be tempted, but not a person who is seeker of the far show. Here in eight braids and eyeshadow may be enough to beguile a fool, but not a seeker of the far show. So he's talking to about his wives. They did all the makeup. So it can tempt a fool, but not a seeker of the show. A rotting body all adorned, like a freshly painted makeup box, may be enough to beguile a fool, but are not a seeker of the far shore. The hunter laid his snare. That means he's talking about how his father laid the kind of trap for him. But the deer did not spring the trap. I have eaten the bait, and now I go, leaving the trapper to lament. Right. So, uh, so, so, so this was the story he told. Some verses he told his father. Then he went uh, to King Kauravya's deer range and sat for meditation. So King Kauravya, knowing that he has come and he, he knew highly about the clan, he came to him and he sat and uh, and then he said that uh, Master Rathapala, 
there are four kinds of decay because of this some people uh, go into homelessness become monastics what are the four kinds of decay decay due to old age sickness wealth and decay of relatives right that means once the person reaches old he thinks i should go into homelessness uh, second is due to sickness third is due to uh, wealth uh, person lo starts losing wealth and second fourth is decay of relatives but he said in your case there is nothing like that you are young you are hale and hearty you have lot of wealth uh, so why you left your lay life to take up the life of a homeless monastic now um, so ratipala said that great king the blessed one who knows and sees the perfected one the fully awakened buddha has taught these four summaries of the teaching for recitation four summaries of teaching for recitation it was after knowing and seeing and hearing these that i went forth from the lay life to the homelessness right now he is talking about the four four uh, summaries what for number 1 the world is unstable and swept away this is the first. the world is unstable and swept away second the world has no shelter and no savior number 3 the world has no owner you must leave it all behind and pass on number 4 the world is wanting insatiable the slave of craving this is the fourth so so then the king asked uh, the world is uns first one the king asked the explanation you say that the world is unstable and swept away so master ratapala uh, how should i see the meaning of this statement okay so now uh, ratapala explains well, what do you think great king when you are 20 or 25 years old old when you were proficient at riding elephants horses and chariots uh, uh, were you strong and strong at that time he said yes sometimes i had lot of power but what about now he says uh, are you strong now so he said no now i am old elderly and senior and i have advanced in years and reached the final stage of life i am 80 years old that is why uh, buddha said so uh, ratapala said that is why buddha said that the world is unstable and swept swept up away okay then uh, he says uh, the king said do you said the world has no shelter and no savior can you explain that so he so ratapala said king do you have any chronic ailments so he said yes sometimes my friends and colleagues and relatives and family members around me thinking now the king will die now the king will die so uh, uh so he said ratapala said can you get your friends and colleagues relatives and families to help that that means can you say to them please my dear friends and colleagues relatives and family members all of you here share my pain so that i may feel less pain or must you alone feel that pain so he said no the king said no i cannot get my friends to share the my pain rather i must alone share the pain uh this is what the buddha so ratapala said this is what the buddha was referring to when he said the world has no shelter and no savior right now coming to third point he says that king says that in the royal court you will find abundant gold coins and bull, bull, bullion stored in dungeons and towers yet you said that the world has no owner you must leave it all behind and pass on so uh, ratapala said what do you think great king these days you amuse yourself supplied and provided with the five senses five kinds of sensual stimulation but is there any way to ensure that in the next life you will continue to amuse yourself in the same way supplied and provided with the same five kinds of sensual stimulation or will others make use of this property while you pass on according to your deeds so king said yes there is no way to ensure that i will continue to amuse myself in the same way rather others will take over this property while as i pass on according to my deeds so ratapala said this is why buddha said that the world has no owner you must leave it all behind and pass on then for coming to the fourth point uh, uh, king said you said that the world is wanting insatiable the slave of craving how should i see the meaning of this statement okay so ratapala said uh, how do you think great king do you dwell in the prosperous land of kuru he said yes i do so what do you think great king suppose a trustworthy and reliable man were to come from the east he'd approach you and say that uh, please sir the i saw a large country who is very successful and prosperous and it has lots of money and everything and uh, uh, slaves and everything a uh, conquered great king so what would you do he, the king said i'll conquer it so he said okay now another person comes from the west north south or from the ocean he approached you and say the same thing so what what would you do so uh, he said i will conquer it uh, so buddha so ratapala said this is what the buddha was referring when he said 
the world is wanting insatiable slave of craving and it is after that that knowing and seeing and hearing i went forth from the lay life to homelessness so these were the four reasons when he heard the buddha's teaching on these four things he left his uh, from his lay life to homelessness uh, uh, then venerable ratipala said a few poetic verses to the to the uh, king he said that i see rich people in the world who because of delusion give not the wealth that they earn greedily they hold their riches yearning for ever more sensual pleasures a king who conquered the earth by force ruling the land from the sea to sea unsatisfied with the near shore of the ocean would still yearn so this this craving that is there in us that won't stop so a king who has conquered so much of the earth and the land he is he is not yet satisfied he wants to even go and conquer more not just the king but others to reach death not dread get rid of craving they leave the body still wanting for in this world sensual pleasures never satisfy that means not only kings but all beings they get they reach death but their cravings they have not ended and that those cravings keep them in the samsara keep them making the experience making them experience the things that they have craven craven after that karmic force that they generate through their craving continues they take up another body and they continue their cravings so there is this thing that relatives lament they are his disabled saying alas alas they are not immortal right when they die the relatives lament that they are not immortal they die they take out the body wrapped in a shroud heap up a pyre and burn it there it spoked with stakes while being burned in just a single cloth all wealth gone when you go oh, there is only the single cloth that is there all wealth is gone relatives friends and companions can't help you when you are dying so when you die uh, there is no one that can help you you only have to do the uh, sh- see the pain here is take your riches while being beings fair in accordance with the deeds so this is what the buddha sucks he acknowledge got what he got at the time of his enlightenment that sentient beings get the another rebirth as per their deeds right riches don't follow you when you die nor do children wife wealth or kingdom longevity isn't gained by riches nor does wealth banish old age for the wise say life is short it's perishable and not eternal and that's why buddha always said that remember that death is fast approaching keep doing your spiritual work get rid of all the defilements get rid of all the craving so that the suffering can end the continuous birth that we take that can end the rich and the poor feel its touch the fool and the wise feel it too but the fool lies stricken by their own folly while the wise don't tremble at the touch therefore now hear this wisdom's better than wealth since by wisdom you reach consummation in this life but it, but if because of delusion you don't reach consummation you will do evil de- deeds in life after life and with evil deeds you will keep building the karma and you will keep stuck in this cycle of samsara so friends what we have to do is that we have to place the wisdom that is more important in our life and come back to these teachings time after time coming back to the buddha's teachings and staying grounded in these teachings and getting that wisdom and with that wisdom we see that everything is changing nothing is permanent there is no permanent self and everything is a suffering within it and that helps free us one who enters a womb in the world beyond will transmigrate transmigrate from one life to the next while someone of little wisdom placing faith in them also enters a womb in the world beyond as a bandit caught in the door is punished for his own bad deeds so after departing in the world beyond people are punished for their own bad so after you depart only your karmas go with you and according to your karmas you choose which realm you you experience in the next river then if you are de- done evil deeds then you experience the corresponding uh, uh pain because of those deeds sensual pleasures are diverse sweet delightful appearing in disguise they disturb the mind seeing danger in sensual stimulations i went forth oaking seeing danger is so sensual pleasures they appear in disguise they seem to be very good sweet but they disturb the mind and seeing the danger in these sensual pleasures i went forth as the fruit falls from the tree so people fall young and old when their body breaks up seeing this too i went forth oaking the ascetic life is guaranteed to be better right so this is the mineralis course 82 
a wonderful discourse uh, containing learnings on see the, the what i understand is that buddha is not basically ratapal is not saying that leave everything and go to uh, homelessness but important thing what he is trying to say is reduce your attachment to the these desires this this you know sense objects reduce your cravings and desires and attachments more and more more and more so that we can kind of you know declutter our mind otherwise our mind is cluttered with these desires or all the sense objects and that desires cause us worry cause anxiety and all so let go of the desires lead a simple normal life be in the present moment at all times guard your senses stay away from sensual pleasures as much as as can be possible in the worldly lay life that we can right and come back to the teachings again and again come back to the teachings so i hope this was insightful to share your comments thoughts in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya